my scrappy peeps it's Adele from Icky Quill and today's part two of my craft room tour so if you haven't watched part one stop what you're doing pause the video go back and watch part one which I uploaded yesterday which will show you a general look at the craft room as well as a focus on my mixed media supplies but if you watch the start of that if you're not into mixed media that's okay just watch the start of it so you can see how the room is kind of laid out a little bit uh, this is my fourth place that this craft room has been in this house. I love moving things around and I'm about to be moving to its fifth location in a different room uh, because baby number two is getting ready to arrive. Uh, she'll be here when I'm filming this in about eight weeks so I wanted to get this done because moving entire craft rooms and rearranging the house while I have a toddler and a newborn is not it's not preferable is it <laughs> the first part of this tour so this video is more focused on scrapbooking project life stickers embellishments and then the first half is all of my mixed media my paints um, supplies just because a lot of people asked how I separate the two uh, paper crafts do you call journaling a paper craft I guess it is it uses paper in a journal uh, and so I thought I'd separate the two videos so these are my two rascogs. I used to have three, but I cut down to two. And you'll also have to, I do have to apologize. It has started pouring cats and dogs outside. So if you hear the rain, I do apologize. I wish I could control the weather, but I can't. So let's go closer in at the first rascog. Truth be told, this is one of my favorite places to look at in my craft room. Sometimes if I'm feeling a bit stale with my crafty mojo I'll just come and stare at this and I'll find something that I really like and it'll inspire me to make a page uh, so these are the Rascog trolleys from Ikea and have they discontinued this color did I imagine that I may have imagined that um, but here in Australia I think I paid $69 per Rascog they are quite pricey but I do think they're worth it especially if um, you don't have a craft room they're really handy for your craft supplies and you can drag it over to your dining table or your bench or your coffee table um, and craft with them. So in my top shelf, I have this insert, which is also from Ikea. I will put the links uh, of the names down below because I don't know the name of this off the, off the top of my head, uh, but it's meant for clothes for like a drawer divider in the bedroom section and it fits perfectly across the Rascog. And I have all of these plastic pouches now these are actually left over from uh, my teaching days. I used to be a primary school teacher and I used them a lot for all sorts of activities. Um, I had a ton of them left over and they're really handy. I used to buy them from either cheap shops, $2 shops or office works, stationery supply stores, uh, maybe places like Walmart maybe might carry them or Target I'm not quite sure um, but they're really handy and they're about an A5 size so here I have what do we have I've got some Patreon printables that I have printed off um, of my previous months and cut up this these are some travelers notebook supplies that I was using for a specific layout then I have some mystery things oh no this is for my melvin traveler's notebook as well this is probably the one that i use most often and it's all of my doilies i find it really handy because they don't get squashed um, as they would if i just had them with the rest of my ephemera pieces this one is for enamel dots spare enamel dots i have oh, i've been collecting uh, clothing tags because I filmed a video on Patreon a while ago creating some mixed media DIY embellishments with tags and I want to do another version of that maybe a Christmassy one then I have some stuff to make DIY embellishments in case I want to go sit on the couch I can just grab that and so it's that one and then these ones are all empty I keep them there because otherwise they get lost and they're really handy when I go to scrapbook retreats to put some stuff in over here I have these little containers also from Ikea promise not spons I wish I was sponsored by Ikea that would be the crafters dream um, but sadly no these oh this one still has the sticker on it because I always forget what they're called and people always ask me it doesn't have a name it does oh here we go things are gonna fall it's called a Vararia V-A-R-I-E-R-A -E so there's its little 
number if you want to have a look. Uh, and these are really handy because you can kind of stack them on top of each other if you don't have squashable things in there. And I keep two of DIY embellishments. Uh, this one has all of my smaller chunky embellishments like rubber bits and pieces, not uh, my wood veneer, but things like rubber or cork, they all go in there. And then these are some of my Patreon printables that I've cut up and I'm using. A couple of rolls of stickers, what else is here? Ah, some little tags that I made in a video. So that's my top shelf. Alrighty, the next two shelves, I will be honest, don't get used as often as this one. So that's why I put less important things on there. This is an empty container, which is a rare sight in my craft room. I did a bit of a clean up yesterday and I managed to empty it. So that's to be continued as to what's in there. Uh, this one is just for receipts that I can claim on tax. I am shocking at keeping track of my business expenses. And so I feel like if I, I've, I've collected these from all over my craft room, so I feel like they need a home and that's going to be their new home. Uh, this is one of my Inky Quill pencil case pouches. And in here, I just keep um, spare photos. So these are all photos that I've either double printed, they might be rejects, they might have um, a little bit of like a floor to them. And I use these in my Oh, it's a little bit out of focus there, sorry. Um, I use these in my traveler's notebook or in my junk journal. And it's really easy if I go to a retreat just to grab the whole pencil case. Down here I have my wood veneer. So this isn't all of my wood veneer, but this is the organized wood veneer. Uh, and I think this plastic container was just from a, a cheap, no, it was from Bunnings uh, many, many, many years ago. And then in that one, down there I just keep things that I want to de-stash so sometimes I'll get to a sticker sheet and there'll be only a certain number of stickers left and I just know that I'm not going to use them because they're not my style or my colours so I just pop them in that box and I've got some uh, actually just over here I have bought some pizza sized packaging boxes that I'm going to put some de-stash kits together. I find that happens a lot with like ephemera packs there'll be just those last 10 pieces that I know I'm not going to use. I can fool myself and I can push myself to try and use them, but I'd rather them go to someone who is going to have a happier home with them and, and enjoy using them more than I would. Uh, so if you can have a little box or even a plastic sleeve in your craft room for those bits and pieces, uh, it does make it handy and kind of keeps your craft supplies moving and instead of growing all of the stale things that you don't want to use anymore. <laughs> Alrighty, Rascog number two has had a complete makeover since the last time that you probably saw it. I did film a video on, it would have been in my last craft room tour, and I think I did a specific Patreon video as well. Um, but this used to be all embellishments, but I've changed it around a little bit. So I have these tubs from Ikea, I think. Are they also the Valeria? I will put it in the description below. Uh, and I cut some pieces of craft foam that I had, I was using to take nice photos, but then I splattered all over them and lost the niceness. So I've chopped them up and used them as dividers. If I have time, I will put little tabs on them, but I, I kind of know what's in here. There's only three dividers, so it's not hard to keep track of. And this is where I've decided to keep all of my ephemera packs. Now, let me know how you saw your ephemera because boy oh boy, it's a frustrating part of my craft room. I, I just find it very difficult to, to stock. So this first section is all cocoa vanilla, it's chipboard, it's um, ephemera pieces, it's titles. So that's all cocoa vanilla. Then my next section is all crepe paper. So I've just kept them in the plastic packaging mostly that they came in. Uh, so that's all my crepe paper, which a lot of it goes together anyway. So that's why I was keeping it by brand. And then the back section are other brands. Um, so I've just stacked those all in there. And then at the back, I had this magazine rack that I was using for stickers and it was really handy, but I've since come up with a different solution. So I don't know what's going in that guy yet, but 
it'll it'll get used and then I've just got my pouch um, my inky pouch that I use quite often if I want to carry stuff out into the lounge room to do some couch scrapping these two containers here are a little bit naughty but these are all the ephemera pieces that I don't want to put away <laughs> and that have no home they're my homeless ephemera um, and I always try to use these first so they might be uh, last year I was on several design teams and so at the end of the month I would still have heaps of supplies left over so I would often empty the ephemera packs in here it's another one of those IKEA ones and then this is actually a Ferrero Rocher uh, container that I repurposed I do try to go through these quite often and de-stash if there's things that I don't like and whenever I create a page I always try to use those first all right down here I have a I think this is meant for mail I got it from Officeworks and it has my tiny word stickers in there and then my snap um, photo flaps so I can add extra pockets to my project life this is a pen container that I need to go through that I haven't <laughs> and then at the back there are labels these are part of that uh, collection of drawer dividers that I used up with all of the plastic pencil cases just up there with the doilies and things in them uh, these are also in the same pack so they're nice and handy they fit two across these are some six by six paper pads I have so many more six by six paper pads than this but I haven't unpacked them yet we've lived in this house for two years and they're still in a box somewhere <laughs> which is going to be part of this new setting up the craft room I'm going I still have I think about four boxes of craft supplies that I haven't unpacked and my paper pads are in one of them uh, so that's all I've got for now down here I have two plastic containers this one on the right actually has all the leftover bits and pieces if you watched my uh, 100 day project 2018 setup and what I was doing this is all the stuff that I le had left over that I didn't use and I could sort it and put it back in places but I could also not and leave it in here and flip through it and use it for my traveler's notebooks or um, project life so that's why that's just hanging out down here and then this one has some of my inky um, printable collections that I've just cut up and popped in and then this is where I keep all of my monthly printables I um, put them into page protectors for each month and then um, use the I, I usually print several copies of them um, so they're all available on my patreon and it's just handy to have this stuff together and not mixed in with the rest of my ephemera pieces all right so the rascogs are here and then I'll spin you around slowly so that I don't give you a dizzy spell um, but on my desk I have this which is surprise surprise also from Ikea and I'll put the name of it in the description below um, but this is where I'm storing all of my mini alphas and I'm doing this as a trial I can't tell you if it works but so far it's ten times better than what I had so I'm thinking that it's going to work uh, it's really good because it has it's 12 by 12 so if you wanted to put in um, scrapbook papers it would be fantastic I got this idea of my beautiful friend Lauren Hender she has a great YouTube channel and she put her monthly kit subscriptions in there and I just thought it was brilliant so I bought myself two uh, one for alphas and then one for if I get um, sign up for another kit club but at the back I have the taller ones and I tried to keep it the taller ones and the larger font there are some smaller font ones in here but I know that they're on tall pages so I I kind of know which ones to look for I think there's only two different types of font or three that are bigger ones there and then down here I have all of the smaller ones and I have gone through and any that don't have enough vowels and S's and T's and R's and what's the other letter that I use a lot um, Y I seem to use Y a lot and I, they get retired to my mixed media stash which you would have seen um, in the part one of this tour over here if we go back and focus I have numbers so quite often I um, have a lot of numbers left over and then down here are just my little tiny tiny alphas so that just sits on my craft desk and it, it does take up a bit of space it won't fit in the calyx um, but it's so much better than how I had them organized I'm hoping to use them more often 
So if you haven't watched part one yet, um, these are mixed media supplies, these drawers. So I'm focusing just on the scrappy things today. But this is my next piece and I use it all the time, every single time I create something. So these are mainly my stickers, all of my stickers, I think, and enamel little shapes. So this is a container from a cheap shop. It's meant to be a pencil box, I think. And I've kind of got it divided into two sections. This section has all of my um, enamel dots and little enamel shapes. And then this section has uh, puffy stickers. And a lot of these, like look at this one, it's got a moth that I'm not going to use and a swan. So that, that really needs using and putting in the bin because I have a moth phobia. Uh, and a lot of them only have, like this one has two stickers on it. So I need to go through and kind of either merge them all onto one plastic piece of packaging or just get rid of things that I know I'm not going to use. So that's very handy. And then if I have stickers that I've used and pulled off because I didn't like them, I just stick them here uh, for later on. And then this one is another one of those IKEA containers. And I've done the same thing with the craft foam dividers. And there's three dividers in here as well. This first section is just for chipboard and other stuff stickers. So wood buttons, um, these little chipboard pieces. I've got some hole reinforcers. There's some DIY embellishments shoved in there. Um, there's some cork pieces. So that's what this first section is. And then the second section are for my flat stickers that are small. So I can just flick through those. I find it much easier to flick through it on the side uh, rather than by the front. This section is all my 6x12 sticker sheets. I have a lot of crepe paper ones that I can just look through. And I've just sorted them so that all the crepe paper are together. Then I've got all the cocoa vanilla, then all the pink fresh, and then anything else at the back. And then at the back here are the larger, puffy, clear, chipboard, non-cardstock sticker type stickers. And then I've got another one of those pencil cases with my tiny words stuck in the back. So this is really handy to have on my desktop. Uh, and if there's any that I really, really want to use up, I will put them in here. I'll cut them down and put them at the front of this one so that I look at them first. I should just add the top shelf is not organized. There's just a, a myriad of things up there that don't really belong, as is the shelf behind here. Um, because since my tummy has grown, I can't actually reach that shelf. So I haven't really given it much effort in organizing at the moment. Next up is probably my all time favorite craft room storage solution in this room. And it's only a new one, but my goodness, I don't know how I did without it before. So my craft desk is, I film right here and this is directly below it. This is also my pregnant belly hole. So when I'm filming, <laughs> my belly goes in there, perfectly fits uh, so that I can get close to my table. But these are just some really cheap drawers that I had. I've had for years and I think I even had them in my classroom at one point. And this is where I'm keeping all of my scraps. So this top drawer is just, I call it my neutrals. So black, white, gray, and gold. And I just keep all of them in here. The, oh, oh I've gone and broken it. There we go. <laughs> the next one uh, is pink and red. And same thing, they're all in there. Then I've got blue and purple, and then down the bottom is yellow, orange, green, and multicolor because I don't tend to use them as often. I also stick leftover bits of cardstock because a lot of the time I do 9 by 12 layouts, so I have a little strip. Um, I put those down there for when I'm doing mixed media, and then on this side is white cardstock and scrap paper if I need to write anything. But this has been a game changer for me for my scraps. I've tried all sorts of things. I've tried one big container that has all of the bits in it. I've tried a accordion system where I sorted by minute colors like red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, purple, and that didn't work. Um, but this has been fantastic. So I just split it into four color groups that made sense to me and my go-to colors. And it's just been fantastic. I do have a separate thing though for larger scraps because quite often I will cut into a uh, 12 by 12 piece of cardstock or paper, sorry, and have 
like a giant piece left over which won't fit in the drawers so I'll show you that in a sec. I use this drawer all of the time. Uh, draw, big drawers are fantastic if you're able to squeeze some into your craft room somewhere they are so handy. I got the idea to use big drawers from our kitchen because in this house we have a really big uh, like pots and pans drawer and then a really big drawer that we keep our plates and bowls in and they've been life changing as well so definitely uh, something that I would recommend. In here I have this box which is just an old design team box and this is what I keep my larger scraps in that don't fit into those drawers and I've just got them in colour order quite often I will cut a like a strip off and have a 9 by 12 background that's just waiting to get used um, so that's where they go then I have this folder that has all of my wool whoopsies all of my stencils stored in it I have a patreon video on how I set that up I use that all of the time so I keep that nice and handy. I also have this little container which is a Systema, uh, I think you call it, and it has a little tray. I got it from Woolworths here in Australia and I've got two little tubs of embellishments that need using up and this little tub that has my gold uh, glitter stars, a couple of 3D embellishments, labels and twine are in the centre and then wood veneer here. I take this to crops if I need to take things with me um, and that just stays in there. I also keep my wipes and my ATG and my trimmer and then right up the back are a couple of paper pads as well. And then on my desktop I try to keep my pen space minimal. Uh, I just keep a little tin from Ikea that's got all of my pens and scissors and paintbrushes that I most often use, my wet glue and my hardy shine and battery charger. And then this is my hardy swap messy mat I think that's what it's called. I know this tour is taking a while but if you know me and you watch my videos you're probably not surprised. Uh, these Alex drawers I also use all of the time and they're really handy if you can get some sort of drawer system to slide under your, your desk with your most used um, bits it's it's fantastic. I've never had drawers under my desk so this is the first time that I've had it. Uh, so this is my roller stamp drawer which I recently cleaned and organised because boy oh boy did it not look like this before um, but I've been wanting to organise it for a while. I have a lot of roller stamps. I didn't realise how many I had because I had them stored in a few different places um, but yes there is a video I think it was part of an Inky June marathon a couple of years ago and I talked about numbering all of my stamps and I would stick or um, stamp out the words. Uh, I fell off the bandwagon with that but I do want to get back on and do it for the rest of them uh, and I've just got them in various containers. This is a iPhone container I think. I also keep a black ink and my little acrylic block in here and my distress inks up the back. Then in here we have another satisfying drawer. Uh, so this is all my washi and I just keep them in various cheapy containers. There's another two at the back I think. What's at the back there? Purple and green because I use them least often uh, and they get pulled out quite a lot. Um, I do love using washi but I also find myself not using it as much as I should which is why I put it in this drawer so I've been close by. Then I have my PL cards and once again they're stored in a Ferrero Rocher container. I don't actually eat that chocolate. I think I got them as presents from school at the end of the year from kids and uh, my husband happily ate them and I stole the containers out of the recycling. Um, but they're really handy for PL cards and then those haven't didn't fit so they're just, they're just hanging out there and these ones I have to de-stash. And then the final two containers are adhesive, so I've got tape in the top one and then glue and other tapes in the other, so lots of tape and garbage bags and then other adhesives. Okay, I know this tour is taking a while so I'm going to try and hurry things up a little bit, we're on the last stretch. Um, up the top here I have sequins and large paintbrushes that I rarely use. I do use the sequins sometimes but they're easy to get down but the other paintbrushes I don't. I have my stamps in the next one in Avery L envelopes. I don't use them often, I really should but I, I just don't 
then I have fabric in that wire basket who knows what's in that grey basket that's a that's a mystery for later who knows probably all sorts of junk uh, and then in here I have my some of my thickers so I have three of these baskets I grabbed this one I think this one was from Kmart it was either Kmart or the reject shop many years ago and I keep all of my thickers I'll show you in one of the lower ones because it's a bit easier um, but this one has all of my words and multicolored. I have journals that are yet to be worked on or started but not very productive and just put on the shelf for later. <laughs> These two just have miscellaneous junk in them I'm going to be honest they're just there's tax stuff there's spare baskets and containers it's just a whole lot of bits and pieces and then down here we'll have a closer look at my paper storage. So this is a uh, pantry, I think it's in the pantry section. You're meant to separate plates on it or things in your um, kitchen cupboards. But it's really great for the Calyx units. Uh, I keep up the top here. These are layouts that I've created that don't have an album yet. So there's some for my childhood album and there's some for my modern family history album um, that I've started over on Patreon and then down here I keep my double-sided tape and my glues that I use just handy in this little container. Then I've got this, which is called, I think it's the Cavizel. I, I always remember that name because I really, <laughs> really like it. I think of um, Snoop Dogg for Shizzle Dizzle. It's my paper Cavizel. And oh, sorry, I'm really lame and I've reached that point of the day where my jokes have just gotten lamer. Uh, it's meant for A4 paper. So 12 by 12 doesn't fit, but all I do, whoa, we've gone out of focus, there we go. All I do is just sit it on top um, and I haven't had any issues and I just separate them into, once again, colour categories that make sense to me. So down the bottom, black, white and grey, coral, pink, red, turquoise, blue, purple. Uh, this one was text, but I've used up all my text paper, so it's kind of cut apart and then yellow, orange, green and brown and on the side here it's a bit tricky to see but I keep um, vellum on the side and then right at the top let me just move you up a teeny tiny bit there we go uh, right at the top I keep my vellum and any like specialty papers like this is a bit of acetate I just keep them all tucked in at the top down below uh, these are new and I love them uh, they're from Muji which is a store that I've never been in before but my goodness could I do some damage in there if I had more than five minutes uh, they are I kept it I kept the sticker on one of them was it this one I got the sticker on hang on a minute Whoa. here we go it's called a file box and it was $11 Australian uh, and I got two of them of course one for white cardstock and then one has my paper pads in them I've actually stored my paper pads upside down just because I do keep little off cuts um, in there and I know what paper pads I've got I've only got about six in here and so it's easy for me to to flick through and find the front cover of the next one and know what's in there um, but they've been really lovely they fit the calyx perfectly and they help kind of use the most vertical space possible I also have that little business card container a business brochure container from Officeworks that I had stuff in but I haven't at the moment so I've just kept it out this basket has um, things that I want to film videos about but haven't yet and my heat gun and then these four uh, little cubes I explained these two in yesterday's video because they're mixed media -y stuff these are more thickers this top one is black and white I have a lot of black and white and then the bottom one is just gold so there's room to grow in both of them but I use the 6x12 uh, plastic page protectors from Project Life and I just slip them in if I've got more than one packet I'll just put them on top of each other so that I know what I've got left and they've been fantastic I can't stand taking things in and out of those packages that have like the flap of stickiness down the bottom that they originally come in so it's better for my frustration to put them in these page protectors you could also use ziplocs or um, any other 
plastic or keep them in the plastic packaging that they come in. Down here quickly I have A3 printer paper, A3 deli paper, uh, A4 normal printer paper. This has just extra stationery, it's got like page protectors and extra cardstock and things. Blah. It's so heavy. Uh, these two are miscellaneous art supplies that need homes and these three are just miscellaneous bits and pieces. There's some happy mail that I have to put in my happy mail binder. Uh, and who knows what else is in those. They're, they're for future Adele to sort through. I also keep my page protectors in uh, I, the D-ring 12 by 12 binders and they live there for now, but I'm hoping to have a new space for them in the new craft room. And then just quickly under my desk, I that's an empty plastic container. Actually, it has my old selfie in it that I need to get rid of. Uh, I have some supplies that I'm putting together to create another junk journal. This one has art books that I want to find a home for in the new craft room, a nice pretty shelf. There's a basket behind there with all of the kit that I've put together for Archie's baby album. He's two and a half and it will get done eventually. Definitely not before the new baby arrives, but the intention's there and I will film a class on that. And then on this stool I have my current two uh, 2019 albums and some spare paper towel. So I think I've covered all of the parts of my craft room. I love having a big desk. It, it doesn't usually look this clean. I <laughs> will be 100% honest with you. It's a working craft room and I often film for seven or eight hours a day. Uh, so things do get a little bit messy but I I'm excited to do to reorganize my new craft room I will have a setting up the craft room moving the craft room all the choices that I make about new uh, craft storage over on patreon very soon because there are a lot of things that are going to have to change for the new space because it's a lot bigger and like I said I wouldn't I think I said it in this video the brown bookcase is not coming, so I'm going to have to come up with some new solutions with that. Oh, and how I film. I get a lot of questions about how I film. Let's see if I can... I think I need to turn off my studio light. So this is my super professional <laughs> tripod stand. Uh, I need to... Uh, it'll change in the new room because it will need to be a floor stand and I can't have my tripod on my desk because it shakes the desk too much. It shakes my footage. So it is a microphone stand and I have duct taped a tripod to the end of it and I use a heat pack to uh, like sandbag it down so that it doesn't fall on my face. You gotta do what you gotta do. I should also add that I ha always have a garbage bag just hanging um, off one of my drawers and then my recycling is on my door handle. I think that's everything. I think. <laughs> I don't know if it is but I think it is. If I've left anything out um, please let me know in the comments and if you are going through the comments and you see something that you've heard me say in a previous video please feel free to jump in because I think I am uploading this video I'm pre-scheduling some videos because I am having six weeks off YouTube uh, for maternity leave over November and half of December I will continue Patreon throughout that time pre-scheduling things uh, so there'll still be eight videos a month over there but I think this is going up the week before I leave, temporarily. Uh, not, not quotation mark, actual temporarily, not quotation, anyway. Let's say goodbye. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to watch part one if you haven't. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. it helps my channel out and helps new inklets discover my channel. Um, and it just helps other people see some craft room tours if that's what they're into. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.